Hello, my fellow comic book collectors. This is part two of that massive box that I was kind of going through. Um, and there's some pretty great books um, that I'm going to be showing you. The first is whatever's inside this bag. <laughs> so I thought I had it opened all up, but I guess not. So I kind of brought the box down and took all the packages out of it. There was like a whole bunch of packages. Um, it's amazing how much stuff I can buy in a month. Um, I buy way too much stuff. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so um, this one is a slab of some kind. I don't know what it is. Well wrapped. But um, there is going to be, in the finale, I'm going to show a pretty major book. Um, so you got to stay tuned for that. Uh, but um, there's still some really great stuff in these other parts of the unboxing. I think it's going to be four parts and all because there's just so much stuff. But wow, look at all, it's just so much, so much packaging for one, one slab. They did a really good job of packing it. Oh, okay. This one's kind of a cool one. Nice golden age book. This is uh, Tilly the Taller. Taller. Uh, it's a high grade too. 6 -0. Um, Not an expensive book. Uh, but I always thought this was kind of a cool cover. I just always liked the cover. Um, when I first saw this book, I, I saw this like art thing on it. I had thought that somebody had, um, you know, doodled on the, the cover that they were selling. But actually, this is part of the artwork. It's she's skating and she she skates the figure of the person that she likes. So I just think it's kind of cool. This is a uh, four color 176. So Tolly, Tilly the Toller. Total. Uh, and it's just kind of a cool comic. Um, I actually read a lot of these uh, Tilly ones and they're not bad. They're, you know, kind of. Kind of silly humor. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Her, her, uh, the guy that she likes is kind of a genius. And uh, in that issue, he basically, uh, I believe he makes a skating rink for her. <laughs> so he comes up with this invention to uh, make a skating rink. Kind of cool. Um, okay, this next one. Wow. So much wrapping on this one too. Okay. I'm gonna try to be careful but quick at the same time. Okay. Okay, another golden age book. This one is a really great one too. Wow. It is in really rough shape. I wasn't sure how bad the shape would be, but I got it for a reasonably good price. I won this in auction. And it looks like, I would say it's, I'm just looking at this book before showing it to you. I would say it's it's, it's pretty low. I would say like one five maybe. And this is Marvel Comics uh, 90 or 89. And this is a, a cover appearance of, um, uh, Blonde Phantom and um, the Human Torch. It's, I guess, their first crossover or first team appearance or something like that. Um, but it's also what I think to be the first cover appearance of Asbestos Man. So one of the jokes that uh, people make about Doctor Strange is that his second appearance uh, on the cover is Asbestos Man. And I'll show you, actually, I have it right here. Hold on a sec here. This is the comic. That's as Asbestos Man, okay? And Asbestos Man, this is his first appearance in Strange Tales 111. And this is the second appearance of Doctor Strange. Now, Asbestos Man basically has asbestos <laughs> which is great against the human torch you know kind of a good protection against fire but he dies of cancer i believe something like that okay so 
However, this comic also has as asbestos man, even says liquid asbestos. Okay, so I think in a way this is kind of like maybe a golden age appearance of asbestos man. That's a silver age book, so I think that's kind of interesting. See, asbestos man. Is this his first appearance? True first appearance? I don't know. So, a little bit of controversy there. Um, I just think it's a great book. I, I've been collecting a lot of these kind of early Marvel comics, if I can get them. They're quite hard to find, though. Okay, so the next one. I'm trying to figure out how to open this without ruining, potentially ruining the comic. I'm always paranoid about opening these kind of... <sighs> this one's really hard to open. <laughs> so this one is quite hard to open. Okay. Let's get past the outer, outer layer. They put so much tape on it. You can see like all this crazy tape making it very, very hard to get into. I mean, they put these, uh, they put these kind of corner protectors, but, um, but because they use this crazy tape, it's really hard to get into. Oh. Wow, really weird. It says, comic inside, wanted to keep it safe, uh, but really hard to get to. So I don't know how to get to this comic. I'm trying to cut it without cutting the comic. Okay, hopefully that helps. Okay, next layer. Oh. Okay, so he put it in some weird fashion magazine, <laughs> like CQ or something like that, or GQ, I should say, GQ. Uh, okay, so it's inside a weird GQ magazine. I don't know why he did it this way. Okay. I have a GQ magazine that I don't really want. Okay. And so he puts it on in all these weird things, but then the comic itself is raw. I don't know why. So it's Seven Seas Comics. This is, a, I believe, Matt Baker did the art for this. And this is Seven Seas Comics number two. Now, if you know anything about Matt Baker or Seven Seas, uh, you'll know that Seven Seas Comics... Uh, certain issues, like number four or five, are really expensive. Like, insanely expensive. Uh, this one, not so much. So, the reason the ones that I'm, like, that came later are more expensive uh, is they had, they had really amazing good girl art. Some of Matt Baker's best artwork. Well, this one is not featuring any great good girl art on the cover. So, it doesn't command that much. I paid 40 bucks for it. And it's a reasonable, reasonably good grade considering the way it was shipped. It has a bit of a spine roll. But um, I'm just looking through it. So you can see kind of some of our work inside. But yeah, so Seven Seas Comics. Very inexpensive for the non key cover issues. So that's a, I'll have to bag and board that one. I'm, I'm surprised how they shipped it. Really poor, poorly shipped in a way. Um, okay, so that's the first bit of comics. I'm doing for time. Okay, oops, and they dropped the comic. 
Okay, so this is part of my homage collection. <laughs> this is Kiss Zombies number four, I believe. Yeah, number four. And this is an homage to uh, Crime Suspense Stories number 22. Right there. And behind me. You can see it right there. And it's just a nice, cool homage they have the with Kiss. <laughs> so I, I collect homage covers to Crime Suspense Stories 22. It's what, something that I do. Um, and it's kind of a cool comic. I'm not sure. I'll show it a bit better so you can see it. Okay, so <laughs> people complain that I don't show the comics very well. So and this one has really thick packaging. Again, people think that they're doing a good job by packaging it with like lots of thick stuff, but then they they actually ship the comic itself kind of poorly. Just add a lot of extra weight. It doesn't necessarily protect the comic that well. Okay, and so yesterday's video I showed uh, the first full appearance of uh, Five Bell, and in this one I'm going to show you her first cameo appearance which is in this book, Captain Marvel, uh, number 16. Oh, yeah. Five, five of L's first cameo appearance. Okay. So that was kind of a hot book. So I picked it up for that reason. I, <laughs> sometimes I, I get by into spec. So, uh, that one was pretty hot. I bought it when it was kind of came down in price. It went up to like $100 for that book. And then it's come back down. So um, I picked it up when the price kind of dropped again. Let's see if I can get this one out. Jeez. Sometimes people ship things really oddly. Let's see. I don't like when people tape the comic to the board. It's really annoying. That's a pet peeve of mine. When people uh, tape the book to the actual board. Okay, let's see if I can get this out. Okay, there we go. So I've been collecting a lot of these Fox publications. Uh, Fox was a comic company in the 1940s uh, and they produced a lot of really awesome comics like Jojo and Rula and um, a lot of jungle related comics. Uh, they also, you know, uh, made Junior and all those kind of comics too. So um, one of the comics that they produced was Jungle Joe. <laughs> and this is just a really interesting comic just uh, another one of these kind of jungle comics from fox publishing strangely it doesn't say that it's from fox but it is from fox so that's kind of weird so that's a nice golden age book and it's in reasonable shape i'd say like a maybe a 3-0 maybe 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 slightly higher um okay some more Again, why do they have to tape it to the book? Okay, <laughs> it's a really pet peeve. It's like every time, like they they tape it to the to the board, and it just makes it really hard to get out without cutting the book. Okay, let's see if I can. There we go. Pull the challenge. Okay, so um, I was collecting a lot of the keys related to uh, Moon Knight. And one of the ones that was kind of hot, and I think it's still hot, is Moon Knight number two. 
And this is the first appearance of the character that's going to be played by Ethan Hawke in the, in the series. So we'll find out Wednesday if this spec is actually a good spec. Uh, but I guess this character only appeared in this comic and died. <laughs> so um, who knows? Uh, but this is uh, Moon Knight number two. And it's just spec related to the Moon Knight series. Okay. And... Sorry, I'm showing more of me trying to get through the unboxing than I am of the comics. So forgive me for that. Okay, but this is a cool one. Uh, this is Wizard... Uh, bone number 13 and a half now i actually think i have two copies of this i actually ordered this one way back when what you would do is you'd get like a little certificate uh inside of wizard magazine and you could mail it off and you get issue bone 13 and a half and it was just like a short little comic and it comes with a certificate of authenticity and it's like kind of this kind of cool comic so um it was like a very very short comic um but it's kind of a cool comic if you're into bone so this is bone number 13 and a half the wizard mail away by jeff smith so that's kind of cool and uh, some more golden age uh, and again they taped it to the box <laughs> that's the theme the theme of this video is Taping comics to the box. Okay, this one's not too, too bad, actually. This one is a bit rough. Um, actually, he had priced it at 80, but I talked him down. Uh, it's like a 2-0 grade. Uh, I think I talked him down to 50 on it. So it's Fight Comics, uh, number 43. And there's nothing special about this. I just like the cover. It's, you know, kind of one of these bondage, good girl art covers. I kind of like this. So that's Fight Comics number uh, 43. It's a really great cover. And I'm not sure if this is um, Lily Renee or I'm not sure who did the art for this one. But it's a really great cover. I just really like it. Okay, so that's that one. And again, again, another book taped to the <laughs> taped to the box. <sighs> okay, why do they do this to me? Okay, some more Golden Age. Lots of Golden Age in this unboxing today. If I can just get it out. Okay. So this one, I was just mentioning uh, how I was trying to collect JoJo comics from Fox Publishing. And this is JoJo number two. Now, the later issues after number seven got into sort of more jungle related <laughs> comics. And they were really interesting. Like the JoJo comics, really cool. Like I have to say, they're, they're some of my favorite comics because they're just, the stories are so insane. <laughs> like just insane. Um, so yeah, so this is, this is when Jojo comics kind of first started. It was all these kind of cartoon kind of characters. Uh, so this is Jojo comics number two. And these ones are really cheap. Uh, you can pick these up for like 30, $40. And for a golden age book, it's not too bad. Um, the later ones are a little bit more expensive. Once you get into that good girl art, you know, they're pretty pricey. Okay, now we get into, oh, I have to be really careful with this one. So this one's kind of a funny one in a way. Um, so what happened was I did a previous unboxing and when I was doing the unboxing, I sliced the comic. I just like literally, it was a mint comic, beautiful comic. And I totally sliced it. Like I just sliced right into the comic. And this one, believe it or not, they're trying to almost set me up to do the same because it's all taped in an odd way. 
but it's a Jennifer Blood number one. And uh, I just wanted to get a comic that wasn't sliced. Uh, so this is the first appearance of Jennifer Blood. This is the first series, and she made her first appearance in the first series. So uh, this is Jennifer Blood number one. So, <laughs> but again, they taped it to the to the to the board, so it's a little hard to get out without potentially cutting the comic. So. I'm a big fan of Jennifer Blood. I really like the current series of Jennifer Blood. The the artwork is kind of really nice, especially the, I mean the covers are really great. I mean there's not too much to the series itself. It's like pretty uh pretty, you know, pretty simple story. It's basically during the day she's a housewife, during the night she's a uh assassin. <laughs> so her her job is basically to be an assassin. So I got Jennifer Blood number one and number two. So this just so this is a double for me, but but I wanted to get this first uh appearance without having it mangled. Okay, so that's that. And we're almost done. Almost done. Okay. Okay, so this is a My Comic Shop order. So, let's see what's inside here. Okay, some more Golden Age stuff. Okay, so I've been collecting um, anything related to McSnurdle. <laughs> I, I don't know. I get into quirky characters, and um, and this is kind of like that. I, I, I kind of got into this quirky characters, and this is uh, Funny Stuff number nine. Now, Funny Stuff number one is the first appearance of McSnurdle, which is this guy right here. And number nine is his first cover appearance. So that's McSnurdle. Um, now McSnurdle, uh, he has like the superpower, he can turn into Mr. Uh, uh, terrific. <laughs> uh, and basically, or uh, what's it? What's it something terrific? Yeah, something, some weird name. Um, but basically he becomes like super fast. He looks like golden age flash when he becomes uh, in his super form. Uh, so yeah, so um, this is funny stuff number, uh, Mr. What's it, I think it is. Um, this is funny stuff number nine. And this is just the first cover appearance of McSnurdle. <laughs> like a character who I like um, because he's kind of funny. Um, and this is um, Funny Stuff 79, which is the very last issue. I like to have the bookends. So this is the very last issue of um, Funny Stuff. I'm still looking for Funny Stuff number one, but it still has yet to come up. So I haven't found it yet. It's a fairly rare book. A lot of these Funny Stuff books are quite rare. Um, but not not expensive. <laughs> That's the funny thing is, you know, if you can find it, it's not expensive, but it's just hard to find it. Uh, this one's really wrapped in an odd way. Not really sure. Okay, so this is like an a looks like somebody took a Gemini mailer, and then they did this kind of weird thing with it, where they kind of boxed it around a comic. Okay, okay, this one's cool. Um, I believe, one sec here, if I can get this out. Okay, so this is Man Thing, um, Adventure into Fear with Man Thing. And I believe this, this is number 11. Now, Adventure into Fear number 10 is uh, the first cover, not cover, first uh, title with Man-Thing, but he's not on the cover. 
uh, this is the first cover appearance of Man Thing. So, uh, Adventure into Fear number 11. So, kind of, kind of a cool first appearance, first cover appearance of Man Thing. So, um, I believe that, so, Man Thing has kind of weird first appearances. He actually made his first appearance in a magazine then later made his first comic appearance in Adventure into Fear number 10, and then he made his first cover appearance in number 11. So, just so you know, the history of Man-Thing. Just another cool character. Okay, there's that. And then we got the last... Wow, he survived. Okay, the last comic. And again, it looks like a Golden Age. Oh, cool. Okay, I didn't realize this had arrived already. Okay, so this is um, Susie, number 83. And you probably wonder, what's so special about Susie, number 83? Well, it is uh, an appearance of Ginger. And I've been collecting Ginger. <laughs> so I have Ginger 1 through 10, which is the complete series. But Ginger, the character, also appeared in this mag in this comic as well. And Ginger is just like kind of like this kind of clumsy, cute girl um, that yeah I really like. So um, I've been trying to collect her her appearances in the various comics, and this is a comic she made an appearance in. Susie number eighty three. Okay, so that's the unboxing for today. I have two more parts to do. And the grand finale will be huge. It's just, it's all amazing things, actually. It's, it's all big books. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm a bit under the weather, so you can probably tell my throat's a little bit sore. Um, and I'm sorry about that, but uh, I hope you enjoyed the video anyways. Uh, please leave a like, comment, and subscription thing. Do all that stuff. And thanks for watching. Bye for now.